So vectors, vector spaces, bases, coordinates, all that stuff, it's great, but that's not where the true power of linear algebra lies. True power is to be found in the subject of linear transformations. That is what we want to turn our attention to. A linear transformation between two vector spaces. Let's call the linear transformation A, the two vector spaces V and W. This is a function that takes vectors in V to vectors in W. It takes vectors to vectors, but it does so in a certain way, in a linear way, in a way that, I don't know how else to say it, a way that evokes maximum respect. And by respect, I mean it takes sums to sums. It takes scalar products to scalar products in the, in the right way. Now, you could write that out with a whole bunch of rules a whole bunch of parentheses, stuff like that. If you've not seen that before, uh, go look that up and then come back and let's talk more about linear transformations. Okay, so let's say that you are given a linear transformation A from vector space V to vector space W. It takes a vector, little v in big V, to what we write as A times V. We put the vector on the right and the linear transformation on the left, kind of like we do with functions. Okay, now here's the thing. If your vector spaces V and W have explicit bases, then one can represent the linear transformation as a what? A sort of a two-dimensional array where you have explicit coordinates for what goes to what. Of course, that is a matrix. That is the matrix of the linear transformation. Now, if you've seen this in calculus before, then there's often a confusion. The matrix is the linear transformation. No, 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 no. It's a little more tricky than that, right? The linear transformation is what it is. The matrix is a representation of it in given coordinate bases. Okay, back to the story. Now, the number of columns in a matrix is n, the dimension of v. The number of rows, m, is the dimension of w. We say this is an m by n matrix. And when we compute a times v, when we apply a linear transformation to a vector, we're really doing matrix vector multiplication. We're really taking a linear combination of the columns of the matrix of a. There are a number of subspaces associated to a linear transformation A from V to W that are really important. V, the vector space of all the inputs to the linear transformation, is going to be called the domain of A. That's good. What do you call W in this case? You're probably used to calling it the range, but if you really want to be a cool math person, then you call it the codomain. That's right, codomain. Totally not messing with you, that is totally what it's called. Okay, where were we? Uh, subspaces, important subspaces. Uh, first of all, zero, just the, the zero vector. That is an important subspace of any vector space, and any linear transformation takes zero to zero because of the rules of how those things work. But there are more subspaces that are very important. One is called the kernel of A. The kernel of A is the set of all vectors in the domain that are sent to zero. So it's everything that A kills or squashes to zero. That kernel is going to be a subspace of the domain. It's a subspace of V. It's got a dimension, and that dimension is called the nullity of A. Man, that's a cool word. Nullity. We've got nullity. We've got codomain. We've got all kinds of good stuff going on here. Okay, other subspaces. There is something that is somewhat dual to the kernel that is also very cool. This is called the image of A. The image of A is the set of all vectors in the codomain of the form A times V. You, you just take all possible inputs, send them to the codomain via the linear transformation. You look at them, they form a subspace of the codomain. That's the image of A. The dimension of this subspace, the dimension of the image of A, is called the rank of A. 
both the rank and the nullity are important numbers associated to this linear transformation. Kernel, image, that's terminology that might be a little unfamiliar to you, but it's really important, and we're going to use both of these. Okay, let's wrap up linear transformations with a little bit of kind of far out perspective. Most of the linear transformations that we are going to be working with from here on out are going to be of the form A has domain V and codomain also V. It takes a vector space to itself. This is a very special kind of transformation called an endomorphism. endomorphism. Oh my gosh, the vocabulary. This is great. I love this subject. Endomorphism. And if you find that intimidating, just think square, matrix. Yeah, that'll work. Okay, if you have that, then you really have a linear algebraic version of a dynamical system. You can iterate A. Since A takes V to V, you can keep going. You can do it again. You can do it again. You can do it again. That's a dynamical system. You might think EX equals AX, a discrete time dynamical system. X goes to A times X, which goes to A times A times X, which goes to A times A times A times X, etc., etc. Now, if you think about the action of this linear transformation from a dynamical point of view, what are you interested in? You might be interested in equilibria. Are there any? Well, zero is definitely an equilibrium, since A always takes zero to zero. But there are other things that you might be interested in as well. In particular, there are subspaces that get sent to themselves. These are called invariant subspaces. So if you start in a subspace, you stay in that subspace. Now, these are dynamically kind of interesting, but really, really important from the linear algebraic perspective.